The Opie and Anthony Show. Today's episode, Recipe for Murder. <laughs> M-M-I-V. <laughs> the Opie and Anthony Show, Act One. <laughs> Opie and Anthony Show. Today's episode, Eat, Drink, and Be Murdered. <laughs> Well, With special guest star Robert Conrad. <laughs> a Quinn Martin production. A Quinn Martin production. <laughs> Opie and Anthony, today's episode, Hide and Go Murder. <laughs> M-M-I-V. Epilogue. <laughs> We're not at the epilogue yet. All right, that's uh, during What Did We Learn? Yeah, the epilogue will be What Did We Learn? <laughs> Opie and Anthony show. Today's episode... Hickory Dickory Murder. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Yeah, welcome to the Opie and Anthony Show. It's the only virus spreading across America. Thanks, XM right. Satellite Radio. And we want to say hi to everyone that uh, got their XM radios turned on overnight. Opie and Anthony Show. Today's episode, Stop in the Name of Murder. <laughs> A Quinn Martin production. <laughs> Opie and Anthony on after Canon on CBS. <laughs> yeah, we got in here early. We were uh, getting the show together and just started talking about the old, old TV programs. The old TV shows. Don't you miss them sometimes? I, I was just noticing everyone has to be beautiful on TV these days. And uh, we, we brought up Canon for some reason and then Kojak. And Opie said he ca he caddied for uh, I ca Telly Savalas. I caddied for Telly Savalas. Uh, I don't even know, man. I guess some probably in the mid '80s or, or yeah. something like that. He give came, me a putter, baby. He came to the Huntington Crescent Club, and the guy was missing all sorts of parts off his body. Yeah, but it didn't matter back then. He, you know, I, I, supposedly uh, he had a fake ear on the show. Yeah, they put a fake ear on him, and he it was missing like a finger or something, piece of his finger. He was missing a, a couple digits. A I, couple I, of digits? I think so, and I, I do remember seeing, like, no ear. Hey, Caddy, look for my ear in the woods over there. Huh? Come on, baby. Yeah, he was Who like, loves you, baby? Where's my golf ball? He was playing golf and uh, sucking on the lollipops. and yeah. Oh, his trademark lollipop. Oh, yeah, and he, he would walk to his ball. Where's my ball, baby? He had a big Aaron Neville mole on his cheek and <laughs> yeah. stuff. And, and he was like one of the hottest stars in Hollywood. Yeah. The guy was all over television. Yeah. You couldn't. Oh, there you go. Kojak. A Quinn Martin production. M C M L X X I I. Uh, what? <laughs> you always had to figure out what year it was. That would be 1970 something. <laughs> Tonight's episode: Recipe for Murder. <laughs> With special guest star, Charo. <laughs> Charo? Charo. Coochie, coochie girl. Yeah, Kojak would walk into a nightclub and she'd be performing. And she'd have to help Kojak find the clues. And Kojak, and Kojak got all the babes, even though he was a, a mess. Oh, he'd walk into some of those clubs to, like, get some, uh, get some info from some informant or something. And the girls would come up, hey, Kojak. And hey, baby, he'd be hugging him. And, <laughs> like, oh. Like you talk to my mole, and I'm going to talk to this woman over here, uh, baby. A Quinn Martin production. <laughs> they put them all out. Mannix. Mannix. Oh, Mannix my God. Mannix was the private yeah, investigator. Yeah, yeah. It was like uh, $100 a day plus expenses. Whoa. What an expensive guy. And Cannon, the big fat guy, Cannon, and the, whole, the opening sequence wasn't believable. He's running around in the hills of California with a little... Six shooter chasing some guy. Cannon's not catching anyone. And then uh, he, he, I, I kind of liked it because he had he was the, the first, first portable guy. phone, right? right. Yeah. First car, car phone, phone ever. And I thought it was the coolest thing. And it was a phone with the little spindly cord, like you'd have it your, at home, that went into the hump yeah. in the middle of uh, his console. And he'd pick it up and go, Mobile operator, get me Klondike 51350. <laughs> right away. Right away, Mr. Cannon. Yeah. Well, he couldn't make a call. He couldn't just dial a number. Mobile operator, <laughs> I need 555-8383. 
What was bigger, Canon's phone or the uh, little doggy company's satellite radio? Ooh, good question. <laughs> I have the Canon satellite radio. It's huge. <laughs> Ooh, is that the Canon theme? They'd be playing this music, and it's a whole montage of scenes on the screen of him running, chasing, and even womanizing. I think. <laughs> You love my fat, don't you? <laughs> Back then, uh, you didn't have to be pretty to be on TV. Now, you know, you got to look, look like the cast of the OC or a Smallville or something in order to be on television. That's why poor little Jimmy Norton doesn't get all the parts that he should get. The great little actor, but perhaps, you know, people like me and Jimmy, you just can't get on television. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not that good back. What was that other show? Um, we were talk I was talking. Macmillan about and Wife. Macmillan and Wife, a Quinn Martin production. There's a nice name. That's the good old days, right? Macmillan and the bitch he has sex with. <laughs> <laughs> Just end wife. <laughs> Macmillan and the girl he's with tonight. Macmillan and still friends. Macmillan and ex-wife, but still on good terms. A Quinn Martin production, or Banachek. Banachek. What was the pitch meeting for that show? Okay, it's going to be great. Wait, what's this guy works for an insurance got, hold company. Hold on, i got to go backwards. Wasn't Rock Hudson uh, McMillan? Yes, he was. Ah. Gay guy. And he was always, you know, very loving with uh, Susan St. James, who was wife. <laughs> <laughs> she played wife. <laughs> wife. <laughs> and they would solve crimes together. <laughs> Ugh, what a nightmare that would be. What are you doing? It probably started out, yeah, why aren't you home yet? I'm working. Why can't I come along with you? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh. You probably didn't believe him and, and had to tag along. I'm McMillan. I'm a cop. I, I, I got work to do. I'm the I got, guy. I'm your wife. I'm the guy. I should be by your side supporting you and solving crimes. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> you know, one of these days you're going to turn me gay, woman. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'd rather have AIDS than take you along. Oh, I do? On tonight's episode, watch <laughs> McMillan's T-cell count drop. <laughs> McMillan and wife try to track down his T-cells. <laughs> tonight's episode, butt sex for murder. For murder. Murder. <laughs> uh, yeah, Banachek was, uh, what was his name? The, the actor? I can't remember. That would be George Papard. George Papard, who later went on to the A team. Yes, George and, uh, Papard. And breakfast at Tiffany's. And breakfast at <laughs> Tiffany's. Yes. George Papard was Banachek, and the plot was he was worked for an insurance company, mm -hmm. and he would go around trying to find missing insured stuff. <laughs> 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 what a great show! Always with a drink and a cigar. <laughs> And he'd, he'd, he'd put on his gloves and try to track down, like, missing boxcars and missing vases. <laughs> that was insured for a million bucks. My company doesn't want to pay for that. I'm going to track it down. I believe you had it stolen. And the whole episode is him tracking down some merchandise that was insured by his company. Yeah, yeah. Oh, who's watching that? Banachek. A lot of people did back in the day. Oh, what about Ode to a Missing Armoire, <laughs> MCMLXXIV. That was made in the 1800s, I think. Yeah. How is that possible? <laughs> Banachek was made in 1882. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't even know we were going to do this today. We just were goofing around uh, before I the show. I loved it, though. But when you said recipe for murder. <laughs> recipe for murder. <laughs> With the cheesy graphic, now it's all about Flash, you know? You watch a TV show, the opening credits get awards now. Because mm -hmm. they're all done, it's a CGI and very flashy. That was like typewriter written <laughs> stuff superimposed on, on bad stuff they cut out of episodes. <laughs> it was all shaky. You know, you'd see the recipe for murder and it's shaking on the screen. <laughs> what does that say? What? <laughs> Loved it. Grew up watching all that Quinn Martin crap. Uh, let's go to Jim in North the Carolina. The streets of San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. And there's a guy, a Carl Malden, who just did not belong on TV. Another guy that didn't belong on TV. Big alcohol-ravaged cauliflower <laughs> nose. Oh, then uh, Michael Douglas was on that one. That was his first big break before he started hitting colored people in the balls with golf balls. And, and 
laughing about it on the golf course. <laughs> the streets of San Francisco. Tonight's episode, Faggot Murder. <laughs> Come on, San Francisco. <laughs> MCMLXX. Bam! V. V. <laughs> 1975. Running around the streets of San Francisco solving gay crime. <laughs> oh. Cross dressing murder. <laughs> All the groovy music. Tom and gay crime. Gay crime in San Francisco. Tonight's episode Michael Douglas goes undercover in a bathhouse to find the killer of gay men. In. Get me a towel, I've been murdered. <laughs> Tonight's episode, I left my murder in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's say hi to Jim in North Carolina. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, what's going on, Owen? Hey, what's up? Hey, originally from Jersey. Just stay, I'm a Marine stationed down here, but uh, glad you guys are back on the air. Oh, cool, bro. Hey, uh, remember, remember Vegas with Dan Tana? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He had a bunch of shows in yeah. Vegas. What was the one where he was in Boston? Oh, that was uh, um, uh, uh, Ben's got the the uh, the squirts uh, today. So uh, uh, for uh, hire. Now. Uh, our Boston connection is not here. Right, Spencer for hire, right, 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 right. With the black eye hawk, Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> Spencer for hire. All right, thank you, Jim. Hey. Oh yeah, Bob's got one of my old favorites. Bob and Jamestown, that. literally old favorites. Good. Good morning, boys. Good morning. Hey, Good morning, Tim. Hey, you. Jimmy. Hi, fella. Hey, Barnaby Jones. You haven't mentioned it. Oh. Barnaby Jones. That's a great oh. pitch, too. I'd love to be in the pitch meeting for that. Yeah, uh, there's how many detective shows are on now? Uh, there's 87 on all the networks. <laughs> I got one more. But the guy's 80 years old. What about a detective who's 80 years old? What? Yeah, Barnaby Jones. Barnaby Jones, the geriatric gumshoe. Tonight's episode, I'd love to catch the murderer, but my prostate's in play. <laughs> Barnaby Jones, M-C-M-L-X-X, B-I. 1971. Very early in the decade, 1971, Barnaby Jones. Act one. <laughs> Barnaby. Uh, what was his son? Oh, he didn't have a son. He was a nephew. Jebediah. Jebediah. Jebediah Jones. Because that was the young, because you got to get, like, a young guy in there to get the chicks. <laughs> to get all the little hippie chicks of the day that were biting into hot dogs and screaming because they were talking back to them. Another guy <laughs> said it looked like he shouldn't be on TV. Yeah. You know, you're putting an 80-year-old guy on television yeah. running around. Yeah. Another guy running around chasing young hoods. Uh, and he's 80 years old. Yeah. Old guy. Barnaby Jones. And the bad guys are always the same guys on all the shows. You'd have, like, John Cassavetes or yeah. that dude from The Man from Uncle. Man from <laughs> you know, Uncle. That guy. I forget yeah, Robert name. Vaughn. Robert Vaughn, exactly. Tonight's <laughs> guest star, Robert Vaughn. <laughs> That's my brother, Darren, by the way. It's the, the, king, the king of useless information. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous what he remembers. Hairpiece for murder, starring <laughs> yeah. Robert Vaughn. <laughs> Comb over or murder. <laughs> <laughs>